Hey everybody, Zach the Shipping Ogre here. So I decided that instead of giving you nothing this week, because we're obviously taking the week off because of Christmas and New Year's and all that, that I would uh, go ahead and assemble some what I would consider the best of of this year and uh, let you enjoy it and peruse it to your chagrin. Whatever. So yeah, here you go. This is the what I consider some of the best segments that we did this year. You are welcome and please enjoy. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Imports Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So uh, recently I was helping somebody out. Uh, they had a, uh, a firearm that they had been handed down to them from their grandfather. But like most hand-me-down guns or, you know, inheritance guns, uh, it had some rust on it. it. Had some rust on it. But and it was a blued steel gun. So there you're like, ooh. so what? Ha-? And if you guys, all you guys out in the audience, you're like, oh, you're, he's this Paul's talking to me. You ever have a blued steel gun and you put it in the wall safe or the closet? How many of you had an uncle or a grandpa or somebody that uh, used to keep their guns in the soft sided zipper case stacked up in the back of the closet? Right. We probably most of you did. If if you didn't do that and your dad didn't do that or your uncle didn't do it, your grandfather probably did it because that's what you used to do. You're like that. You got the 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 half leather, half canvas zipper bag from Montgomery Ward or Sears and you put your blued steel shotgun or your blued steel 22 Marlin or whatever in there and you put it in the back of the closet. You're like it'll be good. I mean, it's you know, it's a closet. It's relative. It's dark. It's cool. It's dry. Then you pull it out six months, a year, two years, five years later, and it's orange, or it's half blue and half orange. You're like, oh, Jared, you have to have to scrape the rust off of a blued steel gun, off a of bluing. No, I haven't done that. Okay, well, for those in the audience who have. They're like, yeah. So what I do is I get out the wire brush, I get out the COP, the oil, and I scrape and scrub and scrape and scrub, and I get all that rust off. And guess what's not there anymore? The bluing. The bluing. (laughs) Now I have these weird silver splotches all over the barrel and the receiver and everything. And you do that. So you're like, well, on one hand, the rust is gone. That's good. But on the other hand, the finish is all effed up. And the truth of the matter is everywhere that the bluing is gone now is going to rust again. So what do you do? That's a good question. You say, well, I mean, I, I called my gun shop guy and I said, hey, would you re-blue my grandpa's shotgun? And he said, sure, it'll be $297 and I'll get it back to you in six weeks. And you said, what? But the gun's not even worth $200. I mean, it's worth to me because it's a hand-me-down, but so you kind of, I don't know. And then you think, could I do it myself? The answer is yes. And the the answer, obviously, because, well, this is the the Duracoat segment. Uh, The answer from Duracoat is they actually have a brand-new product uh, that they're promoting, that they want you to know about, and it's called Dura Blue Badass. This is the badass super protective formula, and this is where Dura Blue kicks the ass of normal firearms bluing. I had somebody ask me. They said, "Well, if the bluing process doesn't protect it from rust." then why is bluing so popular? 
by manufacturers. Do you know, Jared? Uh, because it's probably inexpensive. Because it's cheap. Because it's it's a, it's a very inexpensive and also, treatment process. It's probably also easy to easier to apply than other options. Yeah, well, if you're if you're putting them, if you make now bluing is not easy when you're doing a one off, but if you have a factory and you're doing 500 barrels a week, yeah, boom, 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 just it is easy when you're doing a one off now. Yeah, if you if you listen to us, yeah. So your normal, if you have uh, your your grandpa handed you down a Harrington and Richardson 20 gauge single shot, right? made in 1978 or 2001, probably not 2001, but uh, you got an old H&R single shot or you've got a Marlin or whatever, and it had a blued steel finish. That bluing is, is there to slow down the corrosion process, but you have to oil blued steel guns. You have to oil them continuously because uh, if you don't, they're going to rust. That's just it. Uh, and then they're going to look like crap. Well, Duracoat actually has stepped up, and not only do they have the Dura Blue, the Dura Blue process, but it's a Dura Blue badass, which means it's super corrosion resistant. This is going to be the best, toughest, most resilient bluing that you ever do on a gun. Uh, and you can get it in matte finish or polished finish. So if you really want that super shiny, polished blue black that you know the gun looked when it was brand new, you know, your your shotgun was brand new, came from the factory, and it had that shiny, you know, gun metal blue. If that's what you're looking for, you can do it. And the good news is, you put the the Dura coat, the Dura blue on it, and it's not going to rust. And it's going to be scratch resistant and all that good stuff. So if that's something that uh, you're interested in, and I thought that was a was a good tie in because, like I said, I, I helped somebody recently uh, clean up a blued steel hand me down gun. And once we got all the rust off, there's just little silver patches where the uh, the bluing used to be and now is not. <laughs> so. Uh, there you go. That is your Duracoat Finish Firearm Moment of the Week. Let's move on. All righty then. So yesterday, Zach and I took a, uh, we took a drive out into the western desert, the desert west of Salt Lake City. Yeah, which is wide. Oh, it's just wide open BLM land. You know, there's nobody there but the jackrabbits and the prairie dogs. And uh, we test fired the ARMAD, the Armalite Rifle Minimum Effective Dose Project Gun. So if you have not been paying attention uh, and you're like, what are you talking about? I'm going to tell you. We started out by with I ordered a KE Arms unibody lower receiver. And the one I ordered, you can get them stripped and you have to install the stuff yourself or you can get them completed. And I've I've built and assembled enough lower receivers in my life that I didn't feel like I needed the practice. So I just went ahead and ordered one that already had the trigger in it and the safety and all that jazz. Now, the pins, the pivot pin and the takedown pin uh, are actually HK style pins. They're not HK pins, but they're like an HK style pin. Not like a traditional uh, AR M4 pin. They come out, they pop in, and they pop out. So it's really easy to swap to pull the to pull the uh, what you call the upper receiver off and put it on and so forth. Now the upper receiver. This was a this was a um, a horse of another color. I actually went to the Brownells catalog. Now the KE Arms uh, lower receiver unibody lower came from Brownells. Uh, and it had to go to an FFL because it's actually a serialized firearm part. But uh, the upper receiver that I had, did I tell the story about trying to order one and the the douchebags just canceled my order with no explanation? Did I tell that story? I don't think you told it on the show. Oh, I didn't tell the story. So uh, one of the things that I, I'm, I'm 
working on for the the minimum effective dose is I'm trying to figure out what do you need and what don't you need and what I believe you really don't need uh, unless you're you know, maybe if you're in the in the Marine Corps or the Army or you're living out in the desert or whatever uh, but you really don't need the forward assist and, and you can do without the dust cover oh no just shut up calm down so I was looking for a, a what they call it. They're called stripped uppers or slick uppers, uh, and it's an AR-15 style upper receiver that does not have uh, it doesn't it doesn't have a forward assist, uh, and it doesn't have a dust cover. It's just a, a stripped or a slick upper receiver, right? So uh, I was looking for one because I actually had a version of one, and uh, I order I ordered it, and. It said, thank you for your order, yada, yada, yada. And a couple of days went by, and I said, well, I should probably check and see where that's at. And so I, I went into my email, and uh, there's an, an email from the company, and it says, your order's been canceled. Okay. No explanation as to why, just your order's been canceled. Uh, like, well, I guess just fornicate me right so i responded to it i said are you going to tell me why or is it just going to be a mystery and i sent the email to the company and i got no response so what did i learn i learned that that company is dead to me and i will never speak their name in public give them free advertising and i certainly will never buy anything from them ever uh because that is just that is just terrible customer service like, well, we're just going to go ahead and cancel your order and not tell you why. Suck it. Like, All right. So fortunately, I've been playing this game for a long, 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 long time. And I have not one, but actually numerous Rubbermaid type totes containers, you know, those clear plastic containers uh, with various gun parts in them, right? I've got, if you need a pistol grip, if you need a generic A2 pistol grip for an AR, let me know. I can hook a brother up. <laughs> if you need an A2 birdcage uh, flash suppressor slash compensator, let me know. I can hook a brother up. <laughs> well, one of the things that I had in the box was I had an up, a stripped upper receiver that I got from my friend Randy at DPMS way back when I was, uh, he sent me uh, a bunch of parts uh, for, you know, various AR 15 projects. And one of the parts that he sent me was this stripped upper. And at the time I didn't have, any, I didn't have anything to do with it. I didn't have a project where I could use it. So I just kind of like set it aside. Uh, and what it was unique because what Randy did was he, he put pick rails on not only the top, but also on the left and the right, um, it's kind of it's a unique monstrosity. And of course, this is obviously before Randy sold DPMS to the Freedom Group, and then the Freedom Group screwed it up royally, and they had to sell it. Uh, I believe they sold it. I believe um, that the parent company who owns Palmetto State Armory now owns the DPMS brand name. So there's that. But point being is I had a stripped upper. I was like, okay, cool. So I ordered a rifle, a barrel, a gas tube, and uh, various accoutrements. I got the some furniture from Magpul. Put it all together. So here we are. I've got oh, I, I got a, a Yankee Hill flash suppressor from to put on the front of the barrel from Brownells from their catalog, and put it all together. Right. So it's ready to go. Zach and I. We load up the truck and we drive out into the desert and we get out. And uh, I had on hand because it was a, I went to a Bushnell event a couple of years ago, two summers ago, and I got one of their Bushnell AR red dot sights. Okay, well, you know, what the heck? Bushnell AR red dot sight. I had it on hand, it had a, a, a same plane. Uh, riser on it which means that uh, well you know it 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 same plane with your it co-witnesses with your sites because i had an a2 oh the other thing did i tell them that i put a an, a magpul buis backup site so i got a magpul backup site on there i've got an a2 front site housing and then i i decided to put this this red dot so cool 
go out there and I decide, and I'm I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and zero it. I'm going to zero this thing. So I you know I slow fire three rounds and then I make an adjustment and I slow fire another three rounds and make an adjustment and then I you know slow fire three more rounds and uh, and I'm where I need to be right. And didn't have any problems with the gun. You know, fired one, two, three rounds, good. One, two, three rounds, good. So we do that. We're taking some pictures. We're shooting some video. And and uh, things seem to be going well. <laughs> and, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm rotating between uh, Magpul, brand new uh, Gen 3 P mags. Well, I don't know what happened. I literally don't know what happened, but, and Zach, when I got back, I took everything apart and I, I, I eyeballed it and examined it all. And I didn't see any weird drag marks or stress marks or, or anything. So I, I don't know. Well, about, I don't know, what would you say? 30, 40 rounds. And no, and I, I handed it to Zach. I handed the, the, the completed rifle to Zach. And I said, here, go ahead and shoot this. And Zach, did you shoot it? Yes, indeed. This is the strangest part because I had no problem about uh, shooting it. I went through like what half a magazine or so, full magazine. It was like yeah, it was like fifteen, twenty rounds. You, you didn't have a problem and, at all. And it's Zach, he, you know, emptied a magazine. I was like, cool. I went and got another magazine. We had different ammo. We had Black Hills ammo. I had some military five five six ammo. Uh, I had a variety pack of of, of like miscellaneous ammo, and and uh, so I'm. Sh I, we start shooting it you know we're like I, like i said 50 rounds or so into the test and i start receive i start getting stoppages like i fire one two click failure to chamber around what the what and like all right i you know tap rack chamber around one two double feet or still pipe no it wasn't still pipe, it was a double feet i'm like what failure to, like what is going on here and I was getting really frustrated. I'm like, and I, you know, I, I know how to build guns. I'm not a, a gunsmith. Well, I'd also per, I'd also brought with me the uh, BRN-177, which is a faithful reproduction uh, of the original Colt XM-177 Echo 2, the model that would eventually become the CAR-15. If you guys are fans of Vietnam or Vietnam movies, uh you know vietnam era stuff you know the xm177 uh, it's we've we've done innumerable videos and discussions about it the the brownells version that i have is a fantastic gun i've shot thousands of rounds through it right we featured it numerous times so i thought well, all right well is it the lower that that's giving me problems is something going on with the lower is something going on with the upper is there something going on with the gas system or the bolt carrier you know why is it not grabbing around but if it's not grabbing around that's not the same as a double feed what is going on so here's what i did i disassembled the new gun the armed gun i disassembled it and then i disassembled the <laughs> i disassembled the the xm177 and i swapped them I put the the new uh, I put the new upper on the the brown the XM seven seven lower one seven seven lower loaded it up fired five rounds no problem boom 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 like uh, okay so that's it the other one so I have the KE arms lower with the XM one seven seven upper in it loaded up shoot boom 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 no problem. <sighs> what the f so now i was like all right so the lower obviously works i'm like okay i'm gonna test it more so we loaded up more magazines we loaded up more magazines i put i put the original gun back together started shooting it same thing same problem like all right we'll fornicate this took it apart built two franken guns with the other parts and stuffed magazines in them rapid fired them blah, 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 blah. no problem zero malfunctions zero stoppages so where am i <laughs> so what the what so you could say oh well, it's the polymer lower that's the problem the polymer lower is not yeah but i put the the uh the basically the car 15 upper on it on that lower shot it no problem no issues zero 
Well, maybe it's the upper, maybe it's the gas system, or maybe it's the bowl carrier, maybe it's whatever. Okay, so I put that one on the, you know, the the uh, retractable stock aluminum lower. Put that on there. Boom, 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 boom. Zero issues. Hundred percent ran. Hundred percent. So here I am. <laughs> That's where we are. <laughs> uh, is anybody jumping in the Discord saying with with an opinion about what might might be doing that? Uh, we have one person typing, so maybe they'll be able to enlighten us. Hmm. Well, I guess the uh, the name of the game. That's the name it, of the game. That's the name of the game. Uh, I haven't heard that song in forever. Man, I, I like that song, too. I have an it's, encyclopedic knowledge of random. Uh, that song is hard to find. That song's hard to find uh, because that was used in the Tropic Thunder soundtrack. The doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. That's the name of the game. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. Good song. Um, so anyway, where am I at? I don't know. I don't know where I'm at. I know that that when I mated the brand new upper receiver, the whole upper receiver group that I built and assembled on a another lower, it ran 100. percent And I know when I took an an original factory upper, put it on the KE Arms lower. It ran 100%. So, but apparently they don't like to be together. <laughs> apparently, they're, we're just going to have to come up with an amicable divorce, and uh, I don't know. But uh, during, during this whole process, I actually, and I feel dumb for not knowing this, but uh, my, my buddy Randy, I sent him a picture of, of the old DPMS upper that he had sent me way back when. And I was like, hey, brother, do you remember this? And he's like, geez, that's a blast from the past. Uh, right, Randy. Wait, wait, real quick, we're getting answers. Okay. Did you check the buffer? Did you try swiping out the buffer? No, I didn't. Because, because the, uh, well, if it's the buffer, you say, oh, it's a buffer, you know. See, the buffer, buffer and this buffer spring and, and so forth come with it. Now, I put the new upper onto the lower and didn't have a problem, right? And, and you say, oh, well, the gas systems are different. Actually, no. The gas systems on both guns are identical. They're both carbine-length gas systems. So the gas transfer should be essentially identical. Any other any other theories? <laughs> um, uh, people are typing. Yeah. So this is what uh, my 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 buddy Randy, after he sold DPMS to uh, Freedom Group and they destroyed it, uh, he started a new company called Luth AR. Well, guess what Randy's doing? Randy is actually selling slick upper receivers slick or you know minimalist or whatever you want to call them so i contacted randy the other day and i was like hey brother uh, he calls it a low drag upper receiver it's called a low drag high speed low drag upper receiver and it is a basic it's a it's, it's a well it's it's a slick it's it's a uh, um, whatever you want to call it. It, it, basically low drag, no drag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue this project, and I'm going to I'm going to build an upper using the low drag. Hopefully, the low drag Luth AR. And if this is something you're interested in, if this is something you're like, oh, that sounds like a kind of like a cool thing. Uh, well, you can uh, go to luth-ar.com l-u-t-h-a-r.com and check that out for yourself and he's got a lot of other stuff too he's got a a really slick uh 1022 ruger 1022 uh because the, the the 1022 is is basically it's like the ar of rim fires uh people like to to modify them change them uh put new stocks put new this put new that so the 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 it's a modular chassis 
uh, and it's it's pretty slick. You can adjust the cheek piece, you can adjust the length of pull, uh, and if you ever wanted to build uh, a twenty two, uh, a Ruger t- uh, ten twenty two, like a match gun or a sniper gun, or well, not really sniper, but kind of like a match gun, uh, you could do that. So uh, check that out. Check that out from our buddies at Luth AR. Oh, Sierra Delta Sierra SDS Imports, the makers of the importers of lots of stuff, uh, including a brand new, and it is official now. Uh, it is official. The 10 millimeter uh, TSAS 1911 pistol is now official. It is, it is on the website. And it is listed as the Delta 10, the TSS 1911 Delta 10. So if that is something you would be interested in, you need to contact your local dealer, distributor, firearms retailer, and tell them, hey, do you have the new the TSOS D10 Delta 10 10 millimeter pistol? And if they say no, then you say, why not? And can I get one? And if you order one, can I buy it from you? That's what you do. So... That's kind of a neat thing, and if you're looking for uh, a ten millimeter, a ten millimeter, nineteen eleven, there you go. They've got that. SDS Imports is bringing them in. Yes, indeed. Now, <laughs> I sent to my credit. I sent an email to Dave, the other Dave, not that Dave, but the other Dave, and I said, Dave, you need to update your website because gun con is over and they did it <laughs> yes indeed they did it they said uh, the great american says 2023 is coming fast and our <laughs> our show season is over for now but shot show and the great american outdoor show are on the horizon oh no shot show is that close already yeah. Holy cow. well it's not that close i mean it's September almost. What well, is well at this point? It's when this drops. September no, it first. actually this drops in August. Oh. Thirty one days in August. Oh yeah. Oh, That's right. yeah. We'll be returning on that day. Yeah. So there's that. So that's that, Mr. That's that. It says the YC nine is getting closer to ever than completion. Hydro dipped carbines are rolling out. And um doo. Uh, if you've not visited our website in a while, we invite you to take a look around. So there you go. Take a look around. Snoop around. And uh, you're welcome, all you uh, High Point fans, for for your 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 faithful friend, Professor Paul, uh, sending a message to Dave saying, Dave, go update the website, man. <laughs> this is when they're going to say, we already had it on the schedule to update. We didn't need you to remind us. And that's when I say, sure you did. <laughs> oh, I, t- I kid because I care. Isn't that true, Jared? I kid because I care. I kid because I care. Oh, man. <laughs> so there you go. So there's that. That's that, Mr. That's that. Indeed, indeed. Moving on. Juxi, J-U-X-X-I dot com. The, uh, well, they, it, they will soon, whether it's today, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's next month, what's going to happen eventually is the communists the, who run the, uh, socialist media will get, and what we've seen, what we has been demonstrated during the last week with the admission of, uh, that, uh, robot Zuckerberg, the, uh, the space alien is that, yeah, if the government makes a phone call and we already knew this. Because remember when they did the under the Project Veritas did the Twitter things, mm-hmm. how people in the government made a phone call and told them what to start censoring. Hell, the redheaded Chucky doll even admitted during a White House press conference yeah. that they were in contact with Facebook every day, advising Facebook on quote troublesome content. Yep. So. Your government in Washington, D.C. is engaging in censorship via proxy. 
So what they do is they're like, oh, we're not censoring anything. Oh, we're, oh, well, well, we believe in the First Amendment. Well, what, what well, do you aren't suppose you, that would be done to that company if they didn't? Well, see, censor the regardless, the, that's the the problem is is that we have a government yeah. that's sending emails, making phone calls, uh, that's and what I was saying. committing I, censorship question, via proxy. Oh yeah, my they're question thugs. was posed to the the FBI. Well, what if we don't censor it? Yeah, then what happens? Well, it's oh, it's like the mafia. I mean, maybe nothing. It's like maybe if what if I don't pay you back this money, or what if I don't um, pay you the protection money? Then what happens? Oh, I guess I mean, we'll just find out. Probably will happen. I mean, I can't see the future. You know. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it would, would be a shame be best if your business if were to you burn did. down. Yeah, it'd be a shame if you were to have an accident. It would be a shame if you were to slip in the shower and shoot yourself in the back of the head twice, and then someone else were to take your place that yeah. would, you know, see reason a little better. That's right. It would be a shame if you were to go to a park in the middle of the night and put two bullets in the back of your head while committing suicide. Because we all know that's how people commit suicide, right? They, they go into a park all alone, and they reach around the back of their head and and shoot themselves in the back of the head we know that well if they're friends of hillary and bill they do that's how you commit suicide but seriously folks uh jukesy jukesy is not beholden to youtube or google or facebook or instagram or anyone so if youtube decides all oh, you mean gun talky people are bad and we're going to take down your videos. It won't affect Juxi. If if Twitter or Instagram censor your content, it won't affect Juxi because they own and operate and control everything they do. So uh, you might want to take a moment and get over to juxxi.com and get signed up. And while you're there, follow Student of the Gun. Yep, subscribe or, to the Student of the Gun channel. Or... They can do the typical American route. They can complain about Facebook and complain about YouTube and never go to the alternative platform. And then the alternative platform dies and be like, how come that one platform died? Because you morons wouldn't get off Facebook and Instagram and go somewhere else. Yeah, I said it. I meant it. I'm here to represent it. Not, so, not like our listeners, like the royal you. Yeah, the royal you. Well, if our listeners get butt hurt, they really shouldn't be here. It's kind of like if you don't understand sarcasm, you should go, I don't know, somewhere else. Take card sarcasm 101 with uh, what's yeah. his face. Sarcasm like, 101 with the... Uh, what's that comedian that did that? Uh, I don't know who did that. Oh, man. He did a... That was, oh, 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 that was oh, oh, wasn't it? Oh, it was a Saturday night. Well, we can't that, play it because remember we got oh, in yeah. trouble. Yeah. yeah, it was. Uh, it was the one who just died, Norm McDonald. No, no, way. Was, no, 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 no. It was Joey from freaking Friends. Oh no, it wasn't Joey. It was Chandler. But Norm McDonald was in the class. Norm McDonald was in the class, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So it was Matthew vintage. Perry. SNL Vintage. It was Matthew Perry. And there's Norm MacDonald yeah. in the front asking him questions. So bless his heart. Rest in peace, Norm MacDonald. Oh, I but thought yeah. Chandler was the one with the long face. Which one's the long with the long, with the long face? That's Ross. Ross. I've seen like one episode of Friends ever. But here's the thing. You knew exactly who I was talking about. You knew exactly who I was talking about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, oh, when I was talking to, with Joe the other day, uh, with uh, Joe Mo, and that's his real name. Um, on uh, on Marty's show on Talking Lead, Joe said he goes, he goes, I ha I I came in and he said there was a note from a customer that said he had come in and talked to the gentleman with a distinguished jawline, and he was talking about me. <laughs> with, that's funny. With the distinguished jawline. Uh, <laughs> So there you go. All right, all right, all right. Moving on. Get over to Jukesy.com. Sign up. It doesn't cost you anything. Jeez, Louise. It costs you, like, really a minute of your time. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink some water and be quiet. And if you're a new listener, or any listener, for that matter, just pay attention. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. 
Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. I'm gonna tell you what. This is me telling you. I I believe that I may just be the hardest working man. I am the James Brown of Gun Talk Radio. I am the James Brown of firearms podcasting. What I'm here to talk about is the ARMED project, also known as Armed. Um. So the Armed project after Jared and well Jared and the family went on a little sojourn and it's none of your business where they went but they did That's right and now they're back yeah you don't need to know so while they were on the sojourn zachary and i and we talked about this last wednesday we took the armed because i finally got all the pieces parts i got the pieces from brownells i got the pieces from magpole i had the pieces that i already possessed uh put them all together i was like well we need to test it out so i went out and we did some testing and I zeroed the optic, and everything was running great. Then I went over to the pickup truck, and I had the Armed rifle, and I had uh, an XM-177 or the BRN-177. Had that, and somehow, I well, we took pictures. We needed to take pictures of pieces and parts and so forth. So what I did was I disassembled the upper. Uh, where I, just, I took the upper off the lower, and we did pictures and blah, 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 put them back together, and I started having problems. And we talked about this. We talked about how, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, we talked about how we had, I had swapped the upper and the lower between the, the other gun, and I didn't have any problems. I'm like, what in the world is going on? And I even called my friend Zach Hall from uh, Atlas Defense, who's a gunsmith and an engineer. And I said, bro, I don't know what's going on, right? And I explained the, the problem to him. He goes, well, it sounds like either a gas problem. Uh, he goes, check your gas key. And I'm like, no, the gas key's staked. It's a staked gas key. It's, it's good. And he's like, okay, well, that that's fixed it. And he goes, well, maybe this, maybe that. And so... After I got off the phone with him, I actually went over to the workbench and I completely disassembled the arm in and I had it, I mean, well, you don't know, field stripped it, took it apart and I got all the parts laying there and I looked down and I had this epiphany and I'm like, all right, so on an AR, you have a pivot pin mm -hmm. and a takedown pin. Mm -hmm. The pivot pin is up front. Mm -hmm. The takedown pin is in the back. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, when you assemble a standard AR-15 lower, once you've installed the pivot pin and once you've installed the takedown pin, they're captivated. They don't come out. I mean, well, you can pull them out, but when you draw them out, they stop. They don't come all the way out of the gun. Right. Now, the way the, the guys at KE Arms, with the way they built that is they have essentially... It's like an HK pin. It's not an HK pin, but it's very similar to an HK pin. Uh, which has a little detent ball, and you can pull it all the way out. Yeah. Right? You pull them all the way out, put the thing in, stick them all the way back. Well, I'm looking at them on the bench, and I, I realized, I'm like, oh, yeah, they're not the same length. Mm -hmm. The takedown pin is about, what, an eighth of an yeah, inch shorter yeah. than the pivot pin, which is the same way a regular AR is, right? But the thing is, once you've installed those, you never think about it again. They don't ever come out. They just stay in place. So I, I, I thought, oh, man. So I took the lower, and I put the short pin in the front. And I realized that if you put the short pin in the front, it doesn't lock. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come out all the way, and it doesn't lock in place. And you can put the, the other pin in, and it locks perfectly fine. So I thought, okay, if this is the case... Mm -hmm. I'm really going to feel like a tard. So what I did was I made sure that everything was put together correctly. Mm -hmm. And I drove over to the local indoor gun range because I didn't want to drive all the way out in the desert again. Cause yeah. it's like an hour and a half round trip or two hour round trip. 
So I drove over to the local range and I plunked down my 15 bucks to buy some time on the local indoor range. I took 50 rounds of Black Hill ammo, Black Hills ammunition, four brand new mags. I loaded them all up. I even I spread the ammo out between the mags so that I could change mags when because at first Zach's like he goes sounds like a bad mag. I said yeah I thought that too, but I rotated through four different magazines and it did the same thing with all of them. And he's like oh well it's not the bag then. I'm like unless I got four bad mags. Um, so guess what? I, it took me all of fifteen minutes to run through fifty rounds through four magazines. Not one single stoppage. There you go. So. It, it's funny how when. The lesson learned yeah. is. And, and see that the funny the funny thing is when I used the Cav Arms rifle way back when uh, in 2006, when I took fighting rifle with James and he loaned me a Cav Arms rifle, I didn't disassemble it. I didn't take it apart and fart with it or anything. Why well, you didn't clean it? James was like, no, just give it back to me. And I was like, yeah. So I never disassembled it. It was never a thing. So this is something new. So it is, I mean, because the pins look, if you just like throw them down, they look identical unless you put them next to each other. And you're like, oh, the one pin is an eighth of an inch shorter. And so what the, and I called Zach on the phone. I was like, dude, after, after I successfully ran the test and everything went fine. Like, I was thinking too I, high level here. I called him on the phone and I was like, are you sitting down? Because, and I said, cause you're going to be laughing at me. He's like, what? I, he goes, I am sitting down. And what? Um, he said, yeah. He said, what would happen if you did that is the pin would back out and you would have a tiny, a tiny bit of flex between the upper and the lower receiver. Well, if you have that, you have that flex or that that little gap movement and what would happen is i would i would i i put it together i fired one round two round boom boom nothing yep so what was happening is the pin was it was Just holding enough it was holding by friction yeah but then when it recoiled when it it would back out and then it would create a gap between the upper and lower receiver and that was just enough of a gap for the bolt not to grab yeah that makes around sense and load so uh, learning all kinds of things my my and i'm gonna total i'm gonna this is a learning point right and so how, how do we learn we learn from our mistakes and we learn from the mistakes of other people <laughs> so the mistakes of other people would be me don't or do make sure that if you have a ke arms over and see and as i was talking to zach i said I said, I hate to, you know, I hate this is going on because I know people are like, that's why you should never buy that. That's garbage and, and it's junk and you should never buy that. And I'm like, oh, man. It's not the device's fault. No. And see, what I couldn't figure out is when I swapped the other, the upper with the lower, I put it down there, ran just fine. And I swapped the other lower with the upper. You know, I put the brand new upper that I built on a, on a, a Brownells lower and it fine ran. I was like, what the what? So. Yeah, super well, simple. Yeah, stick the the right uh, the right pins in the right holes, and uh, you be you should be okay. <laughs> That's funny. So there you go. Everything else ran fine. The uh, the flash hider compensator, uh, you know, uh, ran fine. The uh, I I threw a a Bushnell one of their black rifle optics, or I think they call it black rifle AR they call it AR optic. Threw that on there just fine, no problem. The uh, the unobtainium upper receiver from DPMS from 15 years ago ran just worked just fine. Everything was fine. Um, so there you go. There I, you go. I think differently about the, like you said that people would, would um, say that that's why you don't buy that thing. Cause it's a piece of junk or whatever mm. because of that issue. I think that it's, I think a little bit differently myself because I like to know and understand things in the way that they work. <laughs> And what that did is it gave us an opportunity to, to learn something that we hadn't been able to learn before oh, because yeah. it was a unique issue. Yeah. It's and, something. But now, if that happens again, that's going to be part of the debugging process. It's like, okay, we're, instead of starting at a higher level, let's just check the pins first. Did you, and, did you did unplug you, it, you turn unplug it off, it? and plug it back yeah. in? Yeah. Yeah. Is your rifle plugged in? Yeah. Look behind the desk and make sure your rifle's plugged in. Okay. Because like with, with all your experience with this stuff, it's, you, you go directly to, okay, 
Yeah, I'm thinking the higher I'm, level I'm, problems. I'm, I'm, I'm right? checking the gas tube. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in there. I'm like making sure the gas tube is staked properly. I'm checking the gas key to make sure it's yeah. staked down. And I'm like, what? You know, and, 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 Zach, and Zach's like, he goes, well, maybe, you know, get a different bolt carrier, swap the bolt carrier out and see if it runs with that bolt carrier. Yeah. You know, we're like way up here. Yeah. <laughs> we're way up here diagnosing stuff. And it's, and it's actually, well, it's right down here. Yeah. It's like just put the right pins in the right holes and it'll <laughs> work. Funny. So there you go, lesson learned. So we're moving forward with the the Armed project. Yes, indeed. All right, now it's time for me to be quiet and Zach to talk to you guys. So listen up. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Do, 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 all right, that's Dangerous by Madison Rising because, well, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why because uh, this this uh, show or this segment is about being dangerous on demand. We've got a horrible, horrible, horrible story to share from the, uh, is it Mississippi? Yep. Tupelo, Mississippi. Uh, and this is, we'll talk about the uh what grossman said about um on killing and so on and so forth but uh, jared would you go ahead and and give us the details yep it says this is from the dailywire.com the title is horrifying security camera footage shows robert executed a very gracious store clerk police that's what the police said a horrifying video showed a murder that unfolded in tupelo mississippi at a convenience store on Sunday where a very gracious man working at the store was allegedly executed by the suspect. The Daily Journal reported that police charged 26-year-old Chris Copeland with capital murder for allegedly shooting 33-year-old 30, 30, uh, Parmveer Singh in the back of the head after ordering him to get on the floor of the Chevron Food Mart. Tupelo Police Detective Wes Kloak said that the security camera footage from inside the store showed the suspect walking into the store, pulling a gun out of his waistband and pointing it at Singh. The report showed that the suspect was wearing an olive hoodie, yellow t-shirt and colorful pajama bottom, a bottoms, uh, which match up exactly with a video on social media of the incident. The video also matched up with Cloak's description of the incident Twitter censored one account that posted the video. The clerk is very gracious and even gave him a stack of money he didn't ask for, Cloak testified. He opened the safe for him and gave him a bank bag. The video showed Singh on the floor and the suspect jumping over the counter. And then this is a quote from Mr. Cloak. He said, the suspect walked up behind Mr. Singh and at point blank range executed him. The report said that the the detective testified that Copeland walked over and retrieved a spent shell casing and then ripped out what he thought was a DVD recorder box and fled the store. Copeland had previously been convicted of felonies related to robberies and burglaries, which meant that he was banned from possessing a firearm. No. No. But we need more gun control. If we have yep. more gun control, that wouldn't happen. That's right. If we had more gun control, this wouldn't happen. With 27 years in law enforcement, this may be one of the worst ones I've ever seen, Police Chief John Quacka said. The victim was literally executed in the back of the head inside the store where he was trying to make a living. It is just absolutely outrageous. The, prosecutors, the prosecutor said it best. It's monstrous. Copeland was denied bond, and since he was charged with capital murder, he will face either life without parole or the death penalty if convicted. 
I don't know why life without parole would be on the table. This monster needs to be removed from planet Earth. But ladies and gentlemen, let's go let's go ahead and go back to what we learned or what we should have learned from on killing. What uh, Grossman talked about in detail in the book on killing was how when the the recipient, when the victim, when the whatever, when you avert your eyes, when you turn around uh, to the the attacker, you no long you are no longer a human. You're just a thing. When you and and this is something that that liberals and Democrats will never admit. They will never talk about. You know, uh, is the fact that your subservience is actually more likely to get you killed. See, no, 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 that's no, no, that's the exact opposite. No, no, every where I work, Jared, how many times have you heard this? Well, where I work, we have a policy about what to do if if they get robbed. What does the policy say? It says to just give them what they want. Yeah, in the event of a robbery. Do not resist. Cooperate. Give them what they want. Da 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 da. And and those those policy statements are written by people that will are never going to be in a position to have to follow that advice. Yeah, the I, people I, who I would, write those never are the ones behind the counter with a gun in their face. I, I would love for somebody to take this story and like put it in front of one of those like gun control activists like oh the police are your friends just do just you know robbery isn't a big deal it's all insured just give them what they want politicians yeah and be like hey how about this did literally exactly everything that they were supposed to do perfectly and he got shot in the back of the head for it yeah he got murdered for his trouble Has well it always been a human thing to um, not fight back. No, no, absolutely. When did not. we? No. When, when did? When did it? When we became a civilized um, society? In, no, in the current modern era. I mean, even in like the ancient era, there weren't um, the majority of humans wouldn't have done the not fight back thing, and there was just like a small group of quote unquote warrior class people that would fight back. Or, or was it more likely for people to fight back? Because this is literally just accepting victimization. Mm. Not the, I, well, I'm pretty positive that back in the olden days, it was more socially acceptable to fight back and defend yourself like that. Well, see, what? now we have a situation where we have we have those who I wrote a whole article about this. Uh, what was the art? What was the title of the article I wrote? Uh, 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 I can't remember. I've written so many, but uh, essentially. Yeah, when the people who make these policy statements, they are these, uh, you know, yeah, they, like the 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 general that says we never fire until fired upon. It's like, well, what if when we're fired upon, that's then we get shot and die. Well, um, in the event of a robbery, da 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 da, never throw the first punch. Well, what if? The first punch knocks me unconscious or breaks my jaw or, or, you know, gives me brain trauma. Well, yeah, but then you're the de facto good guy. Yeah, but I'm the de facto good guy that's that's paralyzed or dead. What what does the the, the moral high ground? Well, this this clerk has the moral high ground here. Okay, so the clerk took the moral high ground. And we'll never know. We'll never know why the clerk decided to take the moral high ground. What went into it? You know. No, I, I mean, <clears throat> I have a pretty good idea, which is he'd always been told by the media, his bosses, and all that, just give them what they want and they'll leave. Just give them mm-hmm. what they want and they'll leave. Yeah, but that's a lot of supposition because there's we've talked about. Well, um, because, uh, two and then, or three in the past month or two where there was the guy with the knife attack where he was a clerk at a gas station and he grabbed his knife and started fighting back. That wasn't a gas station. It was a... Um, 
It was a was convenience it? store. Was it? I'm I thought it was sure. a smoke shop or oh, something. Oh, it might have been a smoke shop. But there I think was it was a smoke shop where, in Vegas. Remember, there was another one where the guy in the convenience store had the shotgun. Oh, yeah. He, he blasted at the guys that were walking in with their rifles. Yeah, but that, that doesn't counter the current situation. I mean, it's, it's encouraging in terms of, like, good, but in mm. terms of, like, the whole just give them what they want, they'll leave. It's like, well, you know, whatever, right? But cra- you, th- you completely threw me off. Um, yeah. Well, what I'm saying is we don't know if that's what these the the policy is at the store because there's other stores where people fought back. Well, this is probably this is I would say this is probably like a family owned deal. Yeah, right. Yeah, like that, this that, guy probably owns this. One of the owners. But it, yeah. it was a Chevron whatever the F Mart, right? Oh, I don't know. I thought it said like a. Chevron oh yeah, it's food Chevron Mart. Food Mart. Yeah. Okay. Whereas the it, that's exactly is that remember the guy who stabbed the crap out of the other dude that he was like this is my shop and then the other dude yeah. that was his shop. That's Whereas true. this guy was probably yeah. just following corporate policy. Yeah, the and then Chevron Jared, corporate and then, policy. And then also, Jared, what you like, what you like to talk about is like, why would they do that? It's like, well, I mean, I, I, I didn't resist. I gave him the money. Why would he kill me? He got what he wanted. Because you're no longer, you're not a human to these monsters. Yeah. So it, you're I mean, just a thing. Like you said, we'll never know. But if I had to guess, I'd say it was corporate policy combined with, I mean, well, why would he though? There was no reason to kill the guy. The guy was wearing the the robber was wearing a mask. He got what he wanted. He didn't get any resistance. He should have skipped out that door, happy as a loon. Yeah. Nope. Because well, because well, it, it also goes back to the the mirror thinking. Like I would never do that. I I can't imagine someone doing that. I would never do that. Yeah, I know you never would, but that doesn't. Just because you never would and you can't imagine that, I, I guarantee you when this story came out, there were people all over America saying, oh, I can't believe this. It's oh, I can't believe it. Why? Because I would, because you would never do that. So what does that mean? It's kind of interesting to me that the solution, the thing that works in almost every human case you could draw you could look at it uh, from a sales standpoint you can look at it from a negotiation standpoint you can look at it from surviving a robbery standpoint making yourself more human will always get you a better a more desirable outcome and the more you do to take that away from like in, in the robbery case that we're talking about here the less of a human you make yourself the easier it is for the person committing the crime to do whatever they want to do to make sure that you can't identify them or whatever to kill you. The more human you make yourself, the more difficult and there are psychopaths that just don't care. But most people aren't like that. Well, the, the, and one of the things that, that, uh, I believe it was in on killing, uh, that Grossman brought up was how e- even, uh, serial killers when they're interviewed, essentially blame their victims for allowing themselves to become victims for not fighting back yeah. for allowing themselves to be victimized they put the they they justified it in their heads because like well this guy's this person's not fighting back so they must not want to live that badly and it's not my fault that they didn't fought, fight back folks and, and i'm guarantee you that that this uh this and we we could talk about the recidivist criminal we could talk about the fact that this guy who murdered this clerk uh, was previously convicted of robberies, felonies, should have been in prison, but isn't because the, this guy's 26 years old and has been convicted previously of multiple felonies. Why isn't he in jail? Well, it's against the law for felons to have guns, so he won't have one. Really? Well, that worked out well. If we just had more gun laws, this wouldn't have happened. Really? There's laws against crack cocaine, and there's laws against methamphetamines, and they've got those. Well, this is different. How is it different? You have to be dangerous on demand. You have to decide that your life is worth defending. You have to decide, you have to say, when I'm put in a position to defend my life, I will do it. Not if, when. 
So moving on, I can say this, and I'm going to write an article. I keep saying I'm going to write articles, and I do write articles. Um, how to know whether you're going to a good school or if it's good training. Holy crap. I bet you guys. The radio audience is is with me here. I've been asking for this for years, <laughs> years, all capitals, capital Y, capital E, capital A, capital R, capital S. Well, you you know, I am the most excited about this. Do you know why I'm willing to do that now? Because, because of this. Yes. Because I spent the last three months picking through 30 years worth of memories of being a firearms instructor and putting it all down on paper so that you guys could have this so that when I go into the when I go to Valhalla and to the great beyond, you'll still have this to read. Uh, and the hardest thing about putting this, the hardest thing about putting this book together, the instructor development manual, probably organizing, well, was remembering all the stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I talked I, I, in, in the if you look at the title, it says with Jeff Kirkham, because when I decided to do this, I, I contacted Jeff and I said, hey, this is what I'm going to do. Would you do me a favor? Would you read through it and kind of give me notes? And the, one of the biggest things that Jeff helped me with, he's like, well, don't forget to mention that. And I'm like, oh, I knew that. I know <laughs> that. But yeah, when you have so much stuff, it's hard to remember all the stuff. As I was writing the book, and it was about a three month process, as I was writing it, I continuously found that I would stop writing and I would go do other things and then I'd be sitting at, you know, I don't know, laying in bed at night or whatever. And I'm like, oh, crap, this has to go in there too. Or, oh, I forgot that part. Uh, I forgot this part. I forgot that part. Um, You're probably that, still going to do that after it's published. Well, that's, that's why it says, look what it says right there. Yeah. Yep. That's why it says, f I was smart enough to put the words first edition on it, right? First edition, because I know uh, that in a year, there'll probably be more stuff that needs to be entered. There's probably going to be more stuff that needs to go in that book. So anyway, the reason that I feel comfortable now giving some helpful hints as to how do I know if I'm in a good firearms training? Now, if you already paid for the class... <laughs> And you're you're 45 minutes into it and you start going through Paul Markle's checklist of how to know and you realize that you're, you know, certain things are, you know, happening. It's too late. You already paid for the class. <laughs> but you even inexperienced instructors may have a golden nugget hmm. like uh, like um, Ken Hackathorn says, when you show up in a class. It's like a, what does he call it? Hackathorn's stew or something like that. Hackathorn's potluck. That's what it was. It's a potluck. He said, take, take all of the knowledge in, even if you don't agree with what I'm telling you to do, as long as it's not dangerous, do it. Mm. If you don't like it, then don't take it away from the class. Just, just leave it here. Take the things that you like away. See so that one of the things that I, that I harp on in the book is, um, is it's way easier to teach, to teach good habits than it is to correct bad habits uh, and training scars. That, that is one reason we say you don't need to go to the range to get good at shooting before you go to a training class. Right. Do the training class first. But here's the thing. Some training produces scars. That's true. There, there are people, there are instructors, well-meaning. You say, well, as long as they're not doing something dangerous, just go ahead and do it, which which seems reasonable. That sounds like the reasonable person thing, right? So you're like, well, okay, as long as it's not dangerous, I'm just going to go ahead and do it, and that'll be good. Well, and it's easy for me to say because I'm spoiled and I've never had to take instruction from an inexperienced instructor. You always had good training. Yeah, I always had good training. So it's easy for me to say that because I've never had to experience horrible training. Yeah. Uh, At least not with firearms. Jared, I'm going to give you something that you probably don't know. I went to, uh, I was in a, a school where in order to load a handgun, this was the process. They told you, draw your empty gun out of the holster, lock the slide to the rear, find a magazine, 
insert it, take your digit, find the thingy, lever thingy, push the lever thingy, put it back in your holster. And this you just a said tactical class. It doesn't matter. It was it was a handgun class. Yeah. So you crazy. say, well, I mean, well, that's not dangerous. Well, actually, dangerous? I could argue that it is dangerous because you're teaching a skill or ah. a way of doing something that you, it would in a life and death scenario, it probably will get you killed. See, but on the surface, it's not. Uh, nobody would nobody would say that's a dangerous action on the range. You're like, no, that's that's very meticulous and fought out, and and, it, yep. and it's you know it's teaching them to find the thingy with their thumb, and you know that's that's good. It's a good thing. Yep. No, it's terrible because that same school, they're like, well, if you run dry in the middle of shooting and you need more ammo, just grab one, drop it, put it in there, rack the slide and go. Yeah, but what you had me do was the exact opposite of that. Well, you just need to know, like, depending on what the situation is or that's not how bodies work, though, or if it's a a tactical reload. So you stop, eject the one mag, find a magazine, eject the one magazine in your hand, put the other one in, and then put the gun away without touching the slide. What if it's a stoppage? Oh, if it's a stoppage, you do this and do that and then do it. So I just taught you four different ways to manipulate a handgun. Did you know that there's one way to clear all of those? Or if you could just learn one way and then do that one way. Mm -hmm. See, that's my point, Jared. That's yeah. the training scars. See. The average person would not see anything of what, what I just said. You know, well, if it's a tactical reload, you do it like this. If it's an empty gun reload, you do it like that. If it's an initial load, if your gun starts out empty, you do it like this. If it's a type one, you do it like this. The average person would see no problem in that. That's It's perfectly safe. It's under controlled conditions. And, you know, the gun's pointed in a safe direction, blah, 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 blah. But. There's a difference between safe. You can still develop training scars, even if you're doing safe things. Mm -hmm. And that's my point. And I go into that in, in great detail in the book about, you know, how instructors, well-meaning instructors who refuse to think, you know, when you just accept the three ring binder and you're like, yep, this is, you know, this is the way Moses did it. And that's the way we're going to do it. And that's the end of that story. And no one's going to talk about it. So uh, that's why I feel competent now to write a little how-to. All right. We're talking about Supreme Court decisions. So the, the Supreme Court recently spanked the communists. The communists are getting spanked all over the place. As a matter of fact, New York got a double spanking. See that crossbreed holster? Was it? Somebody's wearing yeah, a crossbreed? Look, look, it's like the video preview. Uh-huh. Okay, it's coming soon. Ah, crossbreed. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I just saw that. I just saw that. So, uh, the New York got spanked twice. Now, we're not going to talk about the, the voter spanking that they got, but we are going to talk about the, uh, well, Jared, what does it say? The Supreme it's, Court strikes down New York gun law, expanding concealed carry rights. All right. So here we go. This now, is last week. Those of you that have been here for a while, you know about the poll that I presented to the audience back in. I don't even remember what year this was, but the question was something along the lines of do women who squat and have bigger booties like spankings more? Now, the reason I bring this up is because we don't know <laughs> what type of new york is do they like the spankings or not oh oh wow well i i apologize audience i apologize to everyone in the audience for that uh dateline washington supreme court on thursday Take struck down a new york law that placed strict restrictions that's an interesting combination there strict restrictions on carrying concealed firearms in public for self-defense finding its requirement that applicants seek a concealed carry license demonstrate a special need for self-defense is unconstitutional, uh, which we've known for a long time. Yeah, okay. Welcome to the party, New York. In a 6-3 to three ruling, the Supreme Court reversed a lower court decision upholding New York's 108-year-old law limiting who can obtain a license to carry a concealed handgun in public. 
Proponents of the measure warned that a ruling from the high court invalidating it could threaten gun restrictions in several states and lead to more firearms on city streets. Okay. They forgot to add lawfully. Lawful. Lawful firearms. More law-abiding people are going to be carrying guns, and that's a bad thing. Justice Clarence Thomas delivered the majority opinion for the ideologically divided court, writing that New York's proper cause requirement prevented law-abiding citizens from exercising their Second Amendment right, and its licensing regime is unconstitutional. Amen. This is what Thomas wrote, and I recommend the ruling is actually pretty long and beefy, but if you have time, uh, maybe when you're sitting on the potty and you don't have anything else to do on your phone, pull up the ruling and read some of it. I think it was like 200 pages, but there's some, there's some really good quotes in there for you. Uh, this is in the article. It says Thomas wrote the constitutional right to bear arms in public for self-defense is not a second class right subject to an entirely different body of rules than the other bill of rights guarantees. We know of no other constitutional right that an individual may exercise only after demonstrating to government offices or officers some special need. That is not how the First Amendment works when it comes to unpopular speech or the free exercise of religion. Dot, 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 yet. He didn't say that. Yet. That was my addition. It is now how the Sixth Amendment, or it's not how the Sixth Amendment works when it comes to a defendant's right to confront the witnesses against him. And it's not how the Second Amendment works when it comes to public carry for self-defense. Writing in dissent for the liberal wing of the court, Justice Stephen Breyer noted the rise in gun violence in the U.S. and ubiquity of firearms. Wow. And warned that the states working to pass more stringent firearms laws will be severely burdened by the court's decisions. What? Well, however, these what a more, scumbag. The states that have more stringent firearms laws have higher crime rates. Crime rates. If you look at Chicago over Father's Day weekend. Oh, you uh, mean 47 people shot? Yeah. That's not that big of a deal. So, Briar, it's no I, big deal. I like reading the the full, um, what, what do they call them? I guess it's a ruling, the full ruling, the full text of the ruling, because it gives you, as people in the Second Amendment space, it shows you what other arguments you're going to have to talk up or, or respond to mm -hmm. when you're talking about this with your friends or family or whatever. And it gives you answers to those things if you don't already have them. Uh, Breyer wrote, in my view, when courts interpret the Second Amendment, it is constitutionally proper, indeed often necessary, for them to consider the serious dangers and consequences of gun violence that lead states to regulate firearms. The Second, or the second Circuit has done so and has held that New York's law does not violate the Second Amendment. I would affirm that holding. Uh, the court's decision comes on the heels of a string of mass shootings from mid-May do early June that jolted the nation and acted as a catalyst for Congress to again mm. search for consensus on a legislative plan to curb gun violence. On May 14th, a racist gunman went on a shooting rampage at a grocery store in Buffalo, New York, killing 10 people. 10 days later, 19 children and two teachers were massacred in a shooting at an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas. We've already talked about all this. Mm -hmm. And it says, Jen, then on June 1st, Four people were fatally shot at a medical building in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I didn't hear about that one. Yeah, you know why? Did you? Because the person who did it was not the right kind of person. Uh, so they're like, nah, we're not going to talk about that. Tulsa gun shooting gunman targeted surgeon he blamed for pain. Yeah, so oh, shh, bad. quiet, shh, quiet there. But here's the thing. Let, let's go ahead and uh, let me uh, go ahead and editorialize. Um, Breyer is wrong. Breyer is a communist. Breyer is a scumbag. And I'm going to tell you why. Because first of all, uh, all of their arguments are based upon lies. Uh, we, we have 100 years nearly. Jared, what's the, uh, the time difference between 1934 and now? So when they say... Uh well yeah no da, 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 da. we need more laws and and, and and more laws and like well we already have laws we have lots of laws we have hundreds of laws thousands of laws so when you say well in order to curb gun violence we need more laws 
So what you're saying is the 10,000 nationwide state, local, and federal laws, uh, gun laws, don't work and are not working. So your your psycho, uh, you know, what's what's the definition of insanity? The definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting uh, a different result. So we already have, now, what they will never bring up is they will never bring up the fact that in 1932, a man, an adult man or adult woman uh, with cash could walk into a hardware store and buy a fully automatic Colt, a fully automatic Thompson. Uh, a, a, what, I think that could, you could buy a Rising back then without a background check. With no forty four seventy three, if you had the money, you could walk into a hardware store in nineteen thirty two, and you could walk out with a Thompson submachine gun, fully automatic, select fire. Do you know how many shootings, how many mass shootings at schools occurred in nineteen thirty two? Actually, before the uh, the great uh, gun control act of thirty four, how many occurred? That would be a zero. Oh, I was going to say it has to be a ton. That would be zero. So when when there was a time in America when you could walk into a hardware store or a gun dealer or whatever, a grocery store maybe, I don't know, that's what uh, Diana, no, it wasn't Diana to get. It was that, uh, remember the, the grocery store lady? She, you can go into a grocery store and buy high-powered assault rifles with with special scopes because remember jared as the fox news expert told us it's the scope that determines whether or not it's assault weapon uh nobody ever points that out how come the writers and reporters and how come they never raise their hand or scratch their heads and say what happened to america what happened in the united states of america when we didn't have we did not have the uh, FBI insta background checks. We didn't have waiting periods. We didn't have the 4473 forms where you had to go in and show your ID and fill out the blocks and tell them whether you're uh, a, a, a Caucasian, Hispanic, or non-binary or whatever. None of that existed. And the number of mass school shootings were zero. None. <sighs> Oh, well, well, that's because they didn't have. This is what I'm playing here. Today. They didn't have schools back then, so our, there there weren't any schools. No, there were. Well, there there. Uh, uh, yeah. What what is it? The the worst school shooting. Uh, the the first big worst one, Columbine, happened five years after. The Clinton crime bill, the assault weapons ban, the the bill, and and also five years after Bill Clinton passed the Gun Free Schools Act. Jared, you mean the Gun Free Schools Act didn't keep people from going to schools with guns and shooting people? But huh. it's a law, right? That's interesting. The the idea that we have someone sitting on the Supreme Court who says, well, you know, and the Second Amendment, and Thomas is 100% right. Just because Amendment 2 deals with firearms, we treat it differently. He said, you don't have to go to the government and ask them permission or, or demonstrate to the government a special need to exercise Amendment 1 or Amendment 4, or Amendment 5, or Amendment 6, or whatever. In no other case do you have to go to a government agency and ask their permission to exercise a constitutional right. That's why, Jared and Zach and everyone in the audience, what that should tell you, the fact that, that the other side feels like you do need to come to them and ask their permission to exercise a right. Now, what if we said, 
literally since we turned these microphones on, Jared, if you have to ask for permission, it's not a right. Oh, yeah. It's a privilege. And a may issue concealed carry state, if it's a may issue, you know, California may issue, New Jersey may issue, New York may issue. What that means is, yeah, technically on the books, there is a, there's, there's a law and there's a bunch of words that say how you can go about trying to get permission from the government to carry a gun. But the, the reality of it is if you didn't donate to the sheriff's reelection campaign and you're not one of his bros or you're not an exceedingly rich, important person, uh, the answer for you, stupid peasants, is no, go away. That's not liberty. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out this book right here since we found it. I'm going to hold it up right here. And uh, this book, The Constitution of the United States of America and Selected Writings of Our Founding Fathers, um, is filled with information that's worth more than gold. But we're going to go to the Bill of Rights, which is, well, Jared, is the Bill of Rights law or is it just an opinion? Um, it is law. Now, remember, we had an enlightened adult member of our audience tell us that the U.S. Constitution isn't the law. It's merely a framework for the creation of government. Remember when that happened? Well, apparently the nine people at the Supreme Court didn't get that memorandum. No, the United States Constitution is law. Article number two. Oh, this isn't it. Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. The Bill of Rights says the da, 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 da. article number four. Why is this? This is weird. Oh, this is the original draft. Yeah. Okay. The The full version is, I think, in the back. Somewhere. Okay, that's the original draft. But it says a well-regulated militia, comma, meaning well-trained, disciplined, disciplined and trained, being necessary to the security of a free state, the right comma, this is all preamble. And see, when they dissect this, you have people who don't understand how to, you know, how to diagram a sentence in English. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Shall not be infringed. Doesn't say if Stephen Breyer gets super scared, or if the CIA or the FBI go out and buy guns for people so that they can commit uh, school shootings. <gasps> Shut your mouth! I'm still waiting for uh, the U.S. government to explain to us how an, an unemployed 18-year-old living in his grandmother's basement has the cash to buy two Daniel Defense rifles, ammunition, and accessories. When I was 18, I was lucky enough I was lucky to be able to scrape together enough money to buy a Ruger 1022 for 149 bucks. I think that's what it was, 139, 149. And you're like, "Oh, no, he had plenty of money. He was uh, an unemployed 18-year-old living in his grandma's basement. He had thousands of dollars in cash." You know, I I mean cuz every 18-year-old does. And also an an 18-year-old knows decides that he goes to a, a gun shore, store, and there's a dozen, 10, 20 different black rifles on the shelf. There's Smith & Wesson M&Ps. There's the, 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 uh, the DS Arms one. There's the Daniel Defense. There's a, and uh, of all the guns, the ones that cost you know $900, $1,100, this 18-year-old kid gravitates towards the most expensive one. Really? And buys really? two of them, right? And buys two of them. Yeah. The the estimate is is he bought like at least five thousand dollars worth of guns, gear, and hardware. Because at w we all what we all know is every eighteen year old that's you know living unemployed eighteen year olds living in their grandparents' basement, they've got thousands of dollars in cash just laying around, right? Of course they do. He used his uh, what do they call it? His Discover card. No. <laughs> He used this, uh, wasn't refund. What do they call that? His tax rebate. 
No, it wasn't. It wasn't that. It was the money, the free money, quote unquote, that they gave out during COVID. Uh, he uses COVID. He uses COVID stimulus money. Stimulus. That's yeah, what it was. He uses COVID stimulus money for that. And of course, what they don't say in here, what Breyer didn't say, is that, oh, uh, yeah, and and down there in Uvalde, uh, down there in Uvalde, a police officer had the opportunity to stop the killer, and decided not to. A police officer had the opportunity to stop the killer before he got into the school, but decided not to. Then the chief of police and his officers, once the killer got into the school, instead of rushing in and attacking the killer, they decided to hang out outside for an hour and 15 minutes. Then they lied and said that they couldn't get to him because the door the room was barricaded. And then Texas DPI came out and said, actually, the door wasn't even locked. You didn't even try. Surveillance footage shows that Uvalde PD didn't even try to get into the room where the killer was. Also, we know that a police officer uh, whose wife was one of the victims decided he was going to attack, go in and take out them, and the police on scene disarmed one of their own and escorted him out of the school so that he couldn't go in and stop the killer from slaughtering children. I wonder what Stephen Breyer thinks about that. I wonder what the uh, Kagan, Elena, I guess it was, I guess it was Breyer, Kagan, and... Uh, Who's the other uh, communist woman on the Supreme Court? I guess they all dissented. I wonder what they think about the the state. You see, that's always the excuse. It's like, oh, you don't need guns. That's why the police are there. The police have the police are allowed to have guns, but you're not. And just call nine one one, and the police will come and they'll save you. Maybe we could ask Breyer and Kagan and oh, who's the other communist woman on the freaking uh, to look. people are screaming it and they're like, ah, they're screaming it. Maybe we could ask them about the Supreme Court decision as to whether or not the police are constitutionally obligated to protect you. Soda mayor. Yep. Soda mayor. Soto mayor. Uh, another communist woman. Right. And they'll say, oh, no, actually, uh, the previous court ruled that that police officers, whether it's a deputy sheriff or state cop or local municipal, that they're actually not constitutionally obligated to protect you. So that sounds like what well, it sounds like to me there, Stephen Breyer and Soda Mayor and Kagan, is that it's up to the people themselves to defend themselves. It's up to the people to protect themselves. So we have the same three communists on the court that would say, have to agree. They're like, well, yeah, we, you, can't, you can't hold the cops responsible for you getting murdered or raped or whatever. It's not their responsibility. Okay. So whose responsibility is it to make sure I don't get raped or murdered? Uh... It's mine, right? So I should be able to carry a tool that will stop someone from raping or murdering or whatevering me. Uh, no, no, because gun violence is bad, and 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 bad people do bad things with guns. And I know bad people do bad things with guns. That's why I need one. No, ah. You ever, you guys ever wonder, you guys out there in the audience, why not one person in the supposed media ever raises their hand and says, Justice Breyer, could you explain the responsibility of the state in keeping the people safe? What is the constitutional duty for the state to keep people safe from harm? Well, it's to protect the society at large, right? So if... So on one hand, the state is telling me I have to come to it and get permission, special permission, and I have to demonstrate cause if I want to defend myself. 
but at, at the uh, with the same and this at the same time they're also saying yeah uh and after we tell you no after the same people it's because it's it's the popo it's the sheriff or it's the city police or whatever they say no peasant we are not going to give you permission to defend yourself so you're going to make sure i don't get hurt or killed or murdered or raped right no that's not our job we don't have to do that oh so you can disarm me and then you can also just step back like pontius Pilate and wash your hands of it and let me get raped and murdered yes that doesn't really sound very liberty to me that doesn't sound like freedom or liberty that sounds like like you're authoritarians and you believe that you are above the citizenry and that you are better than the citizenry that that citizens are peasants and you are the authority figures yeah it kind of does sound like that doesn't it yeah so Oh, do we have questions? Uh, is it true that no mass shootings were ever committed by NRA members? Uh, so, Airman Brett, I, I believe so. I, I don't believe that any NRA members have ever been involved in a, in a mass shooting. If you can come up with one, let me know, but I don't believe so. Uh, in, in the last 20 years, 99.9957% of all mass shooters have been Democrats. Some of them have been proud registered uh, Democrat Obama supporters. Remember the uh, guy who went schizo and shot up the Republican softball game? Yeah. Was a hardcore Obama Democrat. But we're not supposed to talk about that. Shh. Not supposed to talk about that. It's it's not our side that goes schizo and, and mass murders people. It's theirs. They won't ever admit it. They won't ever address it. They won't ever talk about it. But it's true. And we all know it's true. We have any other questions? Boy, do you boys have anything else to say? No, I was just reading I, some I more do, on the Supreme Court decision. I do have one thing, which is something I've been kind of thinking about on the topic of the whole you know, mass shootings and disarmament and all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And that the biggest thing, one of the biggest things that people say is like, or not one of the biggest things people say, whatever, is how many children need to die before you freaking accept more gun control or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. That's one of the big lines that people like to put on signs and uh, stuff. Yeah. Now we're an hour and eight minutes and who cares? Go ahead. Uh, and my, my only thought is, well, if we take every single instance of a child or someone being killed with a gun in a school and then we take that and compare it to say the ccp nazi germany soviet russia even like the the feudal era of japan where the government said yeah you guys can't be trusted with weapons and took away all the all the weapons from the citizenry if we took compared those numbers I think there's a lot more dead children from disarmament than not from disarmament. Oh, obviously. There, there, there's uh, The CCP is responsible for the death of at least 40 million of its disarmed people. The Chinese Communist Party over, oversaw the death, the, ex, the starvation. Some were killed in camps. Some were starved to death. Uh, but they were all disarmed slaves. Uh, minimum 40 million. Soviet Union disarmed their people. Uh, minimum 20 million, minimum 20 million. And you know, everyone's like, Hitler was the worst person in the history of the world. He might've been the worst person in the history of the world in your opinion, but Hitler didn't even come close to killing the number of people that Stalin and Mao did. The Chai comms and the Soviet communists have killed probably what? 10 times more. A conservative estimate is that totalitarian regimes who've disarmed their people have have been responsible for the death of at least 100 million. And of course, the and, same and let's, people. Let's just whittle that number down just for the sake of the argument. How many of those do you think were children? Oh, How many of those do you think were below the age of 18? Oh, a lot. So oh, a lot. if, if we I mean, just take that number, it's still what? You think 
100, 150 times more than what's happening in schools? Well, I'm not trying the, to downplay it. I'm just saying, like, no, you're right. Think well, about it. The same exact, the same exact people that that want to protect children. If this law will save just one child's life, then it'll be worth it. Really? So you want to close down all the abortion slaughterhouses nationwide, right? Oh, that's a woman's right to choose. Yeah, but that's a that's a child. You're choosing to to extinguish the life of a child. That's women's health care. So, health care is killing an, a uh, a baby. A baby is. Uh, it's not the same thing. You're no, you're right. It's not the same thing because Planned Parenthood oversees the the slaughter of over three hundred thousand children a year. Well. Yeah, but those children would be inconvenient. Oh. You see, if you really wanted to be sick and if you really wanted to take it to where they live, you could say that the guy in Uvalde was just was just uh, doing late-term abortions. Disgusting. Oh, that's sick and twisted. Yeah, it is. But how is it that the same people that think 300,000 abortions a year is women's health care, but, but people who lawfully carry firearms and have and have never harmed a person have to be disarmed for safety for the children. You're a liar, and I don't listen to liars. says, in a concurring opinion, Justice Samuel Alito criticized Breyer's dissent for recounting recent mass shootings. He said, does this dissent think that laws like New York's prevent or deter such atrocities? Will a person bent on carrying out a mass shooting be stopped if he knows that it is illegal to carry a handgun outside the home? And how does this dissent account for the fact that one of the mass shootings near the top of its list took place in Buffalo? The New York law at issue in this case obviously did not stop that perpetrator. And that's... I was trying to find that. Yeah, that's because I mean, it's like the the dude said, "Well, how does this affect you know, the recent mass shootings and blah blah blah?" It's like one of them happened in the state where the law already exists. So you're saying that the New York law is good law, and that it's gonna the New York law giving the state the authority to to tell you you're not allowed to protect yourself is a good one, and that keeps people safe. But yeah, you just saw that it didn't keep people safe. Well. Here's the deal. At the end of the day, liberalism is a mental disease, and liberals are liars. Democrats, liberals, communists, they're all the same, and they're liars. All of their arguments are based on emotion, and they're based on lies. And we need to decide, will we be ruled, will we be disarmed by lies? All right, moving on, moving on. How many of you have that annoying a-hole at work or that annoying a-hole at your kid's school or that annoying a-hole neighbor who's like you know that that every time every time there's a there's a, a dem every time a democrat murders people they go they come out and they're like that's why only the police should have guns and if if you didn't spit on them and walk away uh or say those 10 words that will set you free. What are those 10 words? Zach? You are an idiot and I'm done talking to you. That's right. The 10 words that will set you free. You are an idiot and I'm done talking to you. But if you say to your idiot Karen neighbor, okay, uh, only cops should have guns because why? Because they're trained. They're the only ones that are highly trained and 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 then na 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 ma na 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 ma. Okay. Hey, where did you get those facts from there, Karen? Well, from everybody knows. Everybody who? Everybody who's an imbecile like you just knows? Actually, that's not the truth at all. Actually, most police officers are the least trained just because they had to go through a class one time. Most cops know nothing about any gun other than the one that they were given. The vast majority of police officers 
know nothing about any firearm other than the one that they were handed. And they only know what they were forced to know. Most cops, especially in cities, are not gun people. They're not gun aficionados. They're not recreational shooters. They don't go out on their own and do it. They have a gun because it was given to them by the department, and they know about that gun and that gun only. And many of them are horrible when it comes to gun handling and safety. We've got a story from the dailybeast.com. The title alone should give you pause. Zach? And that title is Deputy Accidentally Shoots High Schooler During Classroom Drill. This is yes. a story by A.J. McDougall on the 17th of November. Oh, An Indiana yeah. student was wounded, thankfully, after a sheriff's deputy leading a high school class through a law enforcement scenario accidentally discharged his service weapon negligently. Uh, thank you. Negligently discharged his service weapon. According to whom? Vermilion County officials. The deputy was identified by Indiana State Police as Tim Dispent? Dispinet? Dispinet? A 19 year veteran of the county sheriff's department. 19 year veteran! Dispinet was instructing a popular vocational class on officer training and was conducting a so called bad guy drill when he fired his weapon, according to WTHI TV. The high school senior was grazed by the bullet and he was taken to a local hospital where he was treated for non-life-threatening injuries. Thank goodness. I hope that kid plays the lottery, because he's lucky. As one lucky kid. The superintendent of the South Vermilion County School Corporation, David Chapman. Why does that name sound school familiar? school corporation? That sounds weird. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Or maybe, whatever. Said the student it's, it's described corp, the pain yeah. as a sting. WDRB reported. Dispanet was placed on administrative leave for the length of an investigation into the matter, a state police spokesperson said. Oh, how many, Zach, how many times have I come to this microphone and said that we never, ever, 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 except for one circumstance, use a live weapon for demonstrations in classrooms between 10 and 50, I think. Now, there's one exam. There is only one caveat to that and that is if you are or if you're teaching the people in front of you how to disassemble reassemble and function check an actual firearm for instance i'll give you for instance i was a, a full-time small arms and tactics instructor for the united states military for several years and we had to teach the, the at, at the time the kids the m4 rifle and the m9 right so and one of the things that we needed to do is we needed to teach them how to disassemble it clean it reassemble it and function check it now in that circumstance you cannot do that with a red dummy gun you cannot do that with an airsoft gun you you have to use and and your students all have their issued guns, whether it's a the pistol or the rifle or whatever, in front of them on the table, right? So in that situation, you can't get around it. You can't get around it. But you still follow the four universal safety rules. You don't stand on the podium with an M9 and point it at everybody in the classroom or an M4 or whatever. If you're a firearms instructor and you don't own dedicated trainers you're not a firearms instructor you're a clown you're a fake uh you're a poser but you're not a firearms instructor because a small arms and tactics instructor actually owns tools with which to conduct their job and one of the tools that you need to have to conduct the job of a small arms and tactics instructor is you need to have replica firearms So that when you're doing holster drills or retention drills or you're demonstrating a two-handed shooting position or whatever, you don't have to point a live, real, genuine firearm at your students. Because 
students keep getting shot because people are idiots because arrogant douchebags who think oh, i'm the I, and this this is the zach i want you to find the clip it, it's called it says dea officer shoots self in classroom and uh it was shoot self in foot is probably the number one. There's a video. You guys, my son Zachary, this actually happened, I believe, in the year 2004. Correct. I found the exact video. It's super crushed to just to hell, but. Oh, yeah, because it's old. This was probably recorded with a flip phone. This is not recorded with an iPhone 10. This is recorded by a parent in the back of the classroom with le with a, I don't know, a Motorola flip phone or something. But I want you to play the video. And this, it, this goes all the way back. We should have learned. We should have learned uh, when this happened and decided, you know what? This is a dumb, this is a bad idea. And we need to not let this happen anymore. But you see, we didn't because Americans and, well, humans in general are stupid and they don't learn from the mistakes of others, so they keep making the same mistakes. So listen up. Listen up. Listen to the voice of the DEA special agent police officer as he stands in front of a, a classroom full of kids and says what? I'm, I'm trying to find because it's a almost three minute long video. I'm trying to find the moment where he shoots himself. Oh, well, he yeah, he said he said fifty cent and two show. They all talk about Glock forty. How about this? We're just gonna start about halfway in because I assume that the video doesn't go longer than that, and we'll just go from there. All right. So, oh, I didn't unmute it. Let me, <laughs> let, me, let me unmute this tab. I'll never be able to show guns again. But Brian, so bring that up gun out, Brian. <laughs> yeah. right. no, 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 you went too far here. He shot himself before this? Go, go to, yes, because he, he, he's the crazy, to his credit, he tried to like play it off like he wasn't shot and he, he went for another gun and then the, that's when the, 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 uh, the proctors, the teachers of the room, they're like, whoa, whoa, no, 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 no. He's trying to play it cool. Yeah, he's, yeah, so he. He should, so play the one that I just gave you. Oh, okay. All right. I just uh, put a link in there. And for those of you who remember, now this has been so long that some of you guys in my audience don't remember. You're like, I don't believe this. That's not true. Like, yeah, actually it is. And so the part of the moral of the story is anytime, if you're in a classroom and a cop comes in and he says, hey, I'm going to talk to you guys about gun safety, turn on your phone. Turn on your turn on your camera and start recording because chances are you're going to get a viral video out of that. All right, so now we are good to go. Yeah, go ahead and play it. I muted the thing again. I'm getting, I'm an idiot. One second. Not even sixteen years old was killed because he was playing with a gun. And see, this is an unloaded gun. Right here. This is no empty weapon. Empty weapon. This is a Glock 40. 50 cent, too short. All of them talk about Glock 40. Okay, I'm the only one in this room professional enough that I know of to carry this Glock 40. I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so. No more. Is everybody all right? 15 years ago, everyone I knew had seen this. Go ahead and stop. Uh, what makes it even better is he said, I am the only one in this room professional enough to handle this, to, this gun that I know of. Bam! <laughs> it's like instant ah. karma. So, well, you know what he did? He did the... He left the magazine in. He locked the slide back and jacked the round out. He showed 
he showed it to a guy standing next to him. He walked over, jacked the, the, the slide back, locked. He locked it open. A round came out. He showed it to the guy. Then he walks over. He's standing in front of the kids. He reaches up with his thumb, lets the slide go, points it down in his, at the floor, and presses the trigger. There's so many things. Wrong. And, and that is the that was a DEA special agent, right? And you know what's the funny thing about that? And you guys in my audience who are cool, if you're hip cats, you know that that guy, right, when that video got released and the whole world saw it, right? So he filed a lawsuit against the DEA claiming that they defamed his character because people saw that and he couldn't, I don't know, go out in public or whatever. So real quick, uh, j just kind of a funny thing. The top pinned comment on this video is from Scribbling on the Walls. This is an unloaded gun. Brackets. PolitiFact. Mostly false. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he sued the DEA and the, law and the lawsuit went on for years. And finally, it got to a, a panel of judges or a judge, and they threw it out. They're like, no, you are a complete imbecile. And actually, you know, I know that this guy went through a firearms training class at some point in his life. At some point. And he violated, I'm assuming, everything, every safety rule that he was taught, he violated there. Treat all guns as if they're always loaded all the time. Never a lot. Never put your finger on the trigger until you until what, Zach? Until your eyes are on target and your your sights are on target. Yeah, that's what I meant. Sights and you've made target. a decision made to a shoot. Decision to shoot. Yeah. Uh, never allow the muzzle to cover anything you're not willing to destroy. Destroy. Which would include yourself, your own. Was it just two weeks ago uh, that we had the uh, story of the California cop? Was it two or three weeks ago? California cop shot himself through the hand. The bullet passed through his hand and into the guts of his buddy. I don't remember this one. And his buddy died. Yeah, it was just two weeks ago. Was it two weeks ago? Really? Yeah. Uh, officer, officer shoots self and friend. Friend dies. An off-duty New York, no, well, an off-duty New York police officer kills a woman and wounds another. Uh no that's not it um it was in California I we, we believe oh yeah we Salinas so uh, October twenty sixth a Salinas Salinas County uh an off duty officer cleaning his gun mistakenly shoots self and kills bystander shot himself through the hand and into the buddy standing next to him. His hand had a hole in it. His buddy died. Police officer. So we got it. You're like, okay, that's just one example. Okay, that's two examples. Okay, that's just, that's only three examples of police officers negligently shooting themselves or other people. Well, here we go again. StarTelegram.com, Zach. This is the Fort Worth Star Telegram. Yes, indeed it is. Title, November 7th, 2022. Samson Park officer remains in hospital after being shot in face during police training. A Samson, uh, the thing I just said, uh, over the weekend during a law enforcement training session at an elementary school oof, in Forest Hill. Hopefully no, there wasn't any kids there. Officer mm. Lena Mino, I like that name, Lena Mino, 32, underwent surgery as a result of her head trauma. Mino, a patrol officer, quote, will require additional surgeries in the near future. Erica Smith of Keller, of Keller, wrote on GoFundMe. Of Keller. Keller's a city in Texas. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Where an account for Mino was wrote created. Wrote on, on a GoFundMe account. Yeah, wrote, I said that. Wrote on a yeah. GoFundMe account where an, bleh, where an account for Mino was created to raise funds for her medical expenses and for the travel of her relatives. Um... Real quick, go I'm going to go ahead and say that her relatives, whether it's her husband or parents, I'm not sure if she had, was married, uh, that the Samson Park Police Department is probably going to be writing a sizable check to her and this family. 
And I'm pretty sure that police officers have ins- medical insurance to cover them when they're shot by other cops. I don't know. The training session during which Mina was shot occurred on Saturday at David K. Sellers Elementary School in Forest Hill. It was conducted by police by Texas Police Trainers LLC. According to <laughs> Hey Texas Police Trainers LLC. Here's some freaking uh, uh you, you guys are some high speed bros. According to the Texas Department of Public Safety. Uh Sports. what's the last part there? The Janice Washington, the Killen based company's owner, said Killeen. Killeen. Amazing that this company where the woman was shot in the face was was called Killeen. Killeen. It's a said, Killeen base. It's a city. I know, is a city in Texas. Has the word killing is the joke. Said in a brief telephone conversation. Kill Lena. We're all devastated by this. Washington declined to answer questions and noted the matter was under review. The Texas no Rangers are investigating the shooting. A spokesperson for the agency has declined to describe all its circumstances in detail. The session was an active shooter training not supposed to involve live fire. And no. weapons were prohibited. According to... No. Uh, weapons were prohibited, prohibited, according to Forest Hill Police Chief Eddie Burns Sr. Theresa said that the shooting was an accident and they were investigating how no. a live round was fired during the training. Mina was shot around 2 p.m. at the elementary school. Participating officers rendered aid until Med Star crew arrived, according to the police. She was taken okay, to here's the, the deal. hospital in Fort Worth. Oh. Uh, it was not an accident. Chief Eddie Burns. That was an accident. No, it was negligence, and negligence is not the same. Uh, we we should have hammered on that during the previous one, where the cop shot the kid in the training class. We mentioned it. We it was that. not an accidental discharge. It was a negligent discharge. Negligence is not the same as an accident. You see, negligence is when you fail to address a a known threat or a known risk. When your actions, well, when your actions result in the injury of a person because you failed to either take preventative action or you did something that you should not have done. When the gun goes bang because your booger hook was on the curvy thing and you pressed it backwards, that's not an accident. You see, guns are supposed to go bang. They're supposed to fire. The gun's job, here, watch this. All right, you see that? That is a real gun. That is a real Glock Model 48. The job of this gun, it has one job, that is to launch bullets on demand, right? That is the job of that gun. So if that gun fires, when you press the curvy thing and push it backwards, the gun's not wrong. The gun did exactly what it was supposed to do. Who's wrong is you. Who's wrong is the cop. The DEA agent was wrong. The gun wasn't wrong. The guy in uh, the guy who was, quote, in Salinas, who was, quote, cleaning his gun and it went off. First of all, that's such a load of crap. Every time someone has a negligent discharge, they're like, I was cleaning it. Oh, you're doing a terrible job. That was negligence. That was a negligent homicide. The cop who got shot in the face, it was negligent because, well, they're trying to figure out why there was a live loaded gun in the training. Are they trying to figure that out? Wow. I don't don't know how they figure that out. You folks remember about a year, 18 months ago, when we came to these microphones and talked about how the most dangerous training you can participate in is not live fire training. Like what? It's actually force on force training. 
force on force training is actually the most dangerous training you can participate in because in force on force training people are deliberately pointing objects that look and that behave like firearms at each other on purpose deliberately we talked about how a uh, situation in uh, Tennessee where a guy was participating in force on force training and got shot through the neck and is now paralyzed for life because they broke for lunch. Everybody went away, had lunch, came back. They continued the training. Dude drew a live gun, shot a dude through the neck, paralyzed him for life. We talked about how if you're going to conduct force on force, how the person who's in charge of it has to be an absolute. Get ready to hit the button, Zach. They have to be an absolute. Asshole. You can beep that. You have to be the the consummate range safety Nazi. There's none of this, oh, we're all adults here. We're all big boys. We're all professionals. We all know what we're doing. We just listed not one, not two, not three, four instances where, quote, trained professionals put bullets into people that shouldn't have had bullets put into them. And not in the same place, all in different places. Because why? Because number one, laziness, intellectual laziness, and, and also arrogance. I'm the only one in this room professional enough to handle this gun. Bow! Oops. First of all, don't ever say that. <laughs> That's bad karma. If you say that, I'm the only one in this room who is professional enough to handle a gun. Pow! Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a joke. People are dead. People are paralyzed. People will never, this, this, this chick, uh, if she survives, uh, she's, she's probably going to be scarred for life. She's probably going to be uh, handicapped for life. She was shot in the face right through the head i don't know where the bullet entered i don't know where it exited i don't know if it went in and stayed um but she's looking at years of rehabilitation uh the situation of salinas in california where the guy shot himself through the hand and then into his buddy uh his buddy's dead so he's done uh the guy who shot himself in the foot and the guy who uh, shot the kid you know, at very least, if you only shoot yourself, it's, it's I guess, better off, you know. I, I mean, it still counts if you shoot yourself, but at least if, if you're going to have a negligent discharge, shoot yourself. What happens is we have negligent discharges and innocent people get shot. And why is that? And Ladies and gentlemen, I understand that there are, you know, new people, but the, the guy in the in the um, high school classroom that shot the kid, that guy was, had been on the force for 19 years, right? Now, the, the one that, where the kid, the guy shot himself through the hand and killed his buddy, he'd only been on the department for like six months or something like that, eight months when that happened. So if you are an older seasoned officer, you have to be the absolute range Nazi. You have to be the safety Nazi. You have to be the mean guy that doesn't let anyone come into the training area until they've been for, and we used to actually uh, use two things. We would use mag magnometers, right? A handheld magnometer. Uh, and also frisk people, like actually pat them down. Now, cops and like, hey, I don't, what's that? Magnometer is a little handheld metal detector, right? Yeah, a handheld metal detector. We'd use handheld metal detectors 
and uh, also pat people down. And you're like, oh, come on. That's a, and see, you're like, that's overkill. That's too much. That's we're we're it's an insult. We're all professionals here. You see, every one of these situations that we talked about was not deliberate. It was negligent. They were all negligent. How do you prevent negligence? Through training and by holding fast to the protocols, the universals. Now, see, the trick, the trick with uh, force on force training uh, is that the four universals don't save you because you're deliberately pointing something that looks like a gun, smells like a gun, feels like a gun, but it's not supposed to be an actual gun at humans. So you cannot be saved by the four universals in a force on force situation. You can only be saved by stringent protocols. And when you don't enforce those because you're afraid to offend people, oh, I don't need you treating me like an idiot. I'm not an idiot. I know what I'm doing. I'm the most professional person in this room. Bam. Yeah. I bet you everybody in there, everybody who had a gun in their hand and put a bullet into a person that wasn't supposed to have a bullet put into them would have, before that, described themselves as a trained professional. I'm a trained professional. I don't need you treating me like a child. Okay. Trained professionals. You see, there, the, the sad thing is, and we're going to wrap it up now, the sad thing is, is none of the the Karens, the the imbecile Karens and Kyles that would say only the police should have guns and na 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 na. You you can't you wouldn't be able to give them this information because their cognitive dissonance would not allow them to sit through it. By the before you could explain to them that these four. Four. I mean, I could go. I could. We could do an entire show. We could do a ninety-minute radio show, just ticking off cops who shot innocent people. New York City. Heck, we could just do a show on on New York City cops who shot innocent people, and then said, "Shouldn't ought to be standing there." Maybe not the worst thing in the world. If you wasn't standing there, you wouldn't have got shot. Yeah. Next next time, I guess you won't be standing there. You know what we need to do. We need to make a what? poster. What? The four universal safety rules. Hmm. I don't know. It's pretty hard. It's pretty difficult. Yeah, it's physically there, impossible. Never mind. It's, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> but yeah, so the next time you and, and just in case you, you might have someone, a reasonable person in your life, it's like, well, you know, I can see all. Police officers, only police officers should be allowed to have certain kinds of guns because they're the, the most qualified. They're the trained professionals. Yeah, when, when the DEA agent shot himself, we should have, that should have been it. The whole country should have learned. They were like, okay, you can't hide this anymore because that was at the very beginning of the Internet. Right? That was way back in like 2004, 2004, 2005. Oh, uh, so that was like, really, when, when, when you watched that video, you had to wait for it to buffer and load. You had to like read a paperback book while that video buffered and loaded. I know uh, we can get a great paperback book, but we already talked about that. Yeah. So when that happened, everyone, every officer in America, every police agency in America should have said, whoa, what happened here? And how can we make sure that doesn't ever happen again? But they didn't, did they? So, yeah. And you're like, how dare you bash police officers? Here's the deal. Poli putting on a polyester uniform does not make you a saint. You know, the, the whole every cop is a saint is just as stupid as the all cops are bastards. Just because you put on a uniform doesn't make you a bastard. And just because you put on a uniform, it doesn't automatically make you a saint. It doesn't make you perfect. It doesn't make you a firearms expert. People need to be judged by their actions and by their behaviors. And I don't care what kind of polyester uniform you have on. 
there are good police officers in America. There's not many left, but there are some. And there are a lot of people in polyester uniforms that are tyrants, that are bullies, and that are clowns. Just because you put on a uniform doesn't automatically make you a saint and doesn't mean that we can't question your behavior. You can't question that guy. How dare you question them? They're, they're, they swore an oath to what? What did they swear an oath to do? Preserve and defend the Constitution of the United States? Yeah, there you go. So there you have it. Cat and hat. And that be that. Uh, you can bring this all up at Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. If you have an anti-gun a-hole uh, for a relative, you've got an uncle or an aunt that's a, a super leftist anti-gun person that's, uh, you know, only police should be allowed to have guns. Really? Did you see the story where the police officer shot the kid in a classroom? Did you see the other story where the police officer shot himself? Did you see the other story where the police officer shot the other police officer? Did you see that one? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, those were accidents. No, they weren't. It was negligent. There's a difference, and you're an idiot. I win. I win this argument. You're a moron. Go home and cry. <laughs> we appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, Head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links and remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.